So now you can use the object selection tool to select an object, which it's done well before and it's doing even better now, but you can also just press shift delete and that will delete and fill that selection with some of the area from around it, which makes it disappear. Well, it's mid October of 2022 and Adobe has done what they do just about every year. And that is release new updates for their big applications. Photoshop and Lightroom are no exception. Um, as we start here, we're gonna take a look at the new features inside of Photoshop, which is 2023 now. Um, and that said, if you use any of the portrait stuff that you're about to see here, I did a longer video inside of Lightroom that really dives deep into the portrait related features. And since Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom are pretty much the same thing, I'll put that link in the description if you want to find out what's new and really dive a little bit deeper into that portrait stuff. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Uh, the first thing is gonna be with the object selection tool. So if you head over to your toolbar, it's about the fourth one down or so, it's gonna be a little square object. W is the keyboard shortcut. So you can go to your object selection tool. A couple things to remember, it will automatically find objects if you have that little checkbox turned on. Uh, the other thing is you do have mode between rectangle and lasso. Um, but the main thing about the object selection tool is number one, it, it's supposed to work better. And I've tried it out on a few different images and, and it definitely does. You get a more refined selection. So you can see I just hover over uh, the bird in this case and it finds uh, that as the object. So all I have to do at this point, I don't even have to, to lasso or draw around it. I just click on it and it'll automatically make a selection there. So that's the first thing. Um, after that, the other thing about the way that it works is there's a new feature called fill and delete. So if you have a selection, let's go ahead and click on it. If you have a selection and you right click in the middle, you can do delete and fill selection, which is essentially, it's doing content aware in a way. Um, you could see we have content aware fill there. So I would say try both of them. I usually find the new delete and fill selection works a little bit better, but again, sometimes content aware works better. And if neither one of these works, remember these are, are mostly automatic Okay, except content aware fill will bring you into a window that lets you control what you're going to use as an area to fill. And this is not a new feature. This has been around for years. So if you look it up, you'll find some more information on it. But that's mainly the difference between the two is uh, delete and fill is automatic. You don't really get any options for it. And then content aware fill will pull you into that window. Now, the other thing that you can do here is let me undo that selection. If I go in and I, I, I drag around an object here and it finds the edges, with the object selection tool, I can just hit shift delete and that will automatically get rid of it. It automatically uses the delete and fill uh, thing that I just mentioned there. So I can go lasso around something else, just hit shift delete. This one might be tough because it's right up against the edge, but hey, we'll see what we can do. And I'll drag around that one and hit shift delete. Yeah, not too bad, a little, little fuzzy around the bird there, but it uh, does a pretty good job there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't have, if shift delete doesn't work, it only works with a couple of the tools there. So just remember, if you were lassoing something and you make a selection, all you gotta do is just right click in the middle of that selection and then you can just get to delete and fill selection. All right, moving on from there, we have a, uh, a neural filter that everybody's been talking about. It uh, has to do with photo restoration and it this has nothing to do with the new feature. However, when I was looking for photos to check out the new feature with, I'd realized I had scanned in a lot of old photos at some point. And I think a lot of people do this and you have multiple photos on a page. There's an old, 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 old feature. I mean, probably more than a decade old, but it's really cool. Go up here to the file menu, go down here to automate and then choose crop and straighten photos. Photoshop will automatically go through and crop and straighten all of those photos and put them into separate documents. Okay, so I'm not gonna, that's, there's, there's me, where am I? I am, I'm right there, that's me. That's me sideways in kindergarten. <laughs> so it'll automatically go in there and do that for you. So pretty cool feature, but let's go to one that needs a little bit of work. Head up here to the filter menu, go down to neural filters, and we'll scroll down here to photo restoration. So we just turn that on. You might have to download it. 
And you can see here it does some enhancement. You can enhance faces. There's some other adjustments you can do inside here and then scratch reduction. Uh, I will be honest with you, the filter is not fast. So uh, keep that in mind. This is, this is a pretty quick computer and, and it, it crawls along here. So uh, keep in mind if you're using an eight year old computer, it might not be so fast for you. There we go. So you can see it did a really nice job of getting rid of any of those scratches and bends and rips and folds. So it's, you know, it's hit or miss. Give it a try on your photos. It might do some good things. You might be able to do some uh, color correction, enhance it, you know, add some contrast to it. But um, that's all up in the neural filters. And then from here, let's move on to what's new inside of Camera Raw. And that's, that's really going to probably be the biggest updates. So at this point, I have a photo open. If you open a raw photo in Photoshop, it automatically goes to camera raw. If you already have a photo open, you can always go down to the filter menu, go down to the camera raw filter, and it'll open that window up for you. So the masking changes are probably going to be the biggest. So we'll click on our masking icon over here. That's not new. This panel's not new. It's rearranged a little bit. There's some icons up here at the top. We'll talk about background and object selection next, but let's go down here to people. So it will now, this is the big feature. If you're a portrait photographer, it will now automatically find the people in your photos. When you see it find them, you can go ahead and click on that person. And then you can click on the features that you want to select here. So I'll go with the whites of the eyes and maybe the iris and the pupil. At the bottom, make sure you click create separate masks if you want them to be separated so you can edit them separately. If not, they're gonna be all one mask and they'd get edited together. And then at this point, this is the only new feature. And I say that because remember, when we're creating a mask, we're creating a selection and we're telling it what shape we want that selection in. Now we're telling it we want it to be in the shape of the eyes and the iris and pupil. Okay. It's the only thing that's changed is when we create a mask, we're giving it a shape. We had, you know, sky, background, whatever shapes those were. So here we have portrait shape. So we hit create. Once you're in this panel, nothing is new. Okay. This is the same old masking panel that you've been using all along. What I would encourage you to do is if you're watching this because you use Photoshop sometimes, but you're mostly a Lightroom user, I have a longer video. I'll link it in the description. I have a longer video that covers this much more in depth inside of Lightroom. And it would be exactly the same here in Camera Raw. Okay, very quick 60 second word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it fast and I think you're gonna be interested in this. I put together a Lightroom portrait editing system. It's very affordable and it's got two parts to it. Part number one is about 90 minutes of training on my portrait editing system for Lightroom. Not just the tools you see here, but also some other tools that aren't part of masking that we can use for portrait editing. And my goal was not just to rehash this stuff, but this stuff took me two months to, to learn and really feel good about. And I want to get you past that learning curve faster. Okay. So I think with all the little nuances that we have, I think you'll become much more familiar with these tools and be you really hit the ground running with them. The other part of the system is presets. These are AI adaptive presets. There's 20 of them. They adapt to your photos. So they'll find the eyes and the hair and the teeth and all the stuff in your photos, even though I created them on my computer. So when you put those together, I think you get a really good well-rounded system because presets are great, but you always need to know how to edit them. You need to be comfortable with that. And that's where I think the training comes in so that you are comfortable, you'll have the presets. And also I teach you how to start making your own because I think that is really where the power comes from because what you need is always going to be different from what I need. I think when you put that together, you get a really well-rounded, very affordable product. I hope you'll swim by the website and find out a little bit more. So the way it works here is you just click on a mask and then you do an edit. So I can make the eyes a little bit brighter there I can click on the iris and I can make those a little bit brighter there. Okay. You still have add subtract. You can still double click and rename a mask. You can cl still click the pop out menu. You've got invert, you've got intersect, you can duplicate. Uh, you've got all again, all of the same thing. So the only thing that was done is, is Lightroom and Photoshop used AI to make the selections for you. And you hear a lot of talk about AI. People are like, oh, it's killing photography. Nobody, creativity has gone. This now, that's BS. All this did guys is it made a selection for you. Nobody ever liked the, the work of painstakingly selecting eyes or hair or the face or the skin or anything. Nobody liked that. So all AI is doing is the grunt work that nobody liked. 
you're still required to be creative and do the stuff and the, the stuff that skill takes to go in here and actually do the creative stuff to make the photo look better. The AI is just, just doing the grunt work and making the selections for you. Okay, uh, so that's number one. Let's uh, let's go back. I'm gonna undo a couple of times, get back to our panel here. Uh, another new one is select background. So that will automatically make a selection of the background and that way you can brighten that or darken it or do whatever you need to do with it. Um, and essentially a lot of people will ask, so is background, what is it? All it is is subject inverted. You can do the tests, I've done the tests, they're exactly the same. So it's the same as selecting subject and inverting it. Instead, you just do it in one click with background. And then from there we have an object selection. Let me go back to this photo here because this will work better for it. We'll go up here to our camera raw filter, come back over to the masking and we have objects, okay? So select subject probably would have selected the bird just fine, but what about if you want something else? You wanna select something else like the leaf that we removed earlier, maybe we didn't wanna remove it. Well, you get two options over here under objects. You get a brush and you get a rectangle. Okay, the rectangle is kind of like the object selection tool we saw earlier. You just draw around something and it automatically selects it for you. It does really, really good. Like I, every photo I try this on, I'm actually really surprised at how well it does. And then we'll come back over here and then you've got a brush where you can just paint and scribble around something and it'll make that selection for you as well, just like that, okay? And then again, it's just a mask. So at that point, you're, we're, we're not, it's not, we're not in Photoshop, we're not doing content aware or any of that stuff. With, with a mask, you're either brightening it or darkening it or changing the color or uh, whatever it is we wanna do. All that said, we do now have, if you head up here to the little tools, we do now, now have, you see a little Band-Aid icon up there. So that's new, that's the healing area. It used to just be the healing brush and the clone stamp tool, that used to be it. But now, we get the content aware remove tool. So it's actually using content aware technology uh, to try to remove something. It's a brush. You can change the size of the brush with your right and left bracket keys, just like all brushes in Photoshop and Lightroom. So you just go over here and scribble over something and it will attempt to remove it. My experience is it's not quite perfect yet, but it's getting there. Um, I'm happy to see content aware in here. I didn't think we'd ever get content aware inside um, of Lightroom or Camera Raw, but it's uh, it, it works for some things, doesn't work for other things. But the good thing is, is you can go over here and you can try different tools on it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and reset that and I'll go over here to the healing brush tool and then I'll try to paint. and see what happens with it. And in my experience, this has actually worked a little bit better sometimes, but again, de depending on the texture and what's in the photo, sometimes it'll work good. The other thing to know is, uh, I'll go in here and select that really quick. Um, you can refresh it and you can kind of tell it what to choose from. So if you look over here, there's a refresh option, which will refresh the source. And then you can command or control drag on the photo, simply just drag in an area and see if that helps you fix it as well. All right, last thing here is, uh, let's go reset that. We're gonna head over to our masking tool. So there's one new thing in here that could be pretty cool for some of you. And that is when I make a mask, you'll see you scroll down and you get your light section, you get your color section. Check out what you also get now, curves. So that's new, all right? And here's the other thing, is it's not in Lightroom Classic yet which is very odd because they're usually on par with each other, but for some reason, this hasn't made it over to Lightroom yet. So if you're a Curves user, um, people, I mean, it depends who you are. Some people are gonna just freak out over this feature because so I've heard from so many people that want curves inside of your masking editing. So if you're somebody that uses curves, uh, now you have that whole section in your masking editing. I'm not a real big curves user, so it's not a huge update for me, but again, I know there's a lot of curves uh, lovers out there. So a lot of people are gonna be really happy to know that it made its way in. I had mentioned earlier that I did a longer portrait Lightroom video. Of course, that link will be in the description, but I also did a what's new inside of Lightroom classic video. So if you're interested in that, if you're a Lightroom and Photoshop user, uh, that goes over all the new features inside of Lightroom. That's probably a great place to go next.